The fast of Daniel is the abstinence from all secular information such as media, entertainment, music and literature for 21 days with the aim of achieving something greater, the Holy Spirit. During the fast of Daniel, you will develop an intimate communion with God. But before getting to know what you should do during the fast, you must understand what you should not do. Exclude all unnecessary and superficial activities from your life, the ones that divert your focus from God. Exclude mere entertainment or distractions that add nothing to you. What should you do during the fast of Daniel? Meditate on the Word of God every day. Go to the church as often as you can during these 21 days. Have your personal moments with God at home. Pray, fast and absorb spiritual content. Visit the UCKG's website. Follow Bishop Macedo's blog. Take part in the Fast of Daniel and observe changes in your actions and reactions. Find the answer you have been looking for for so long. The Fast of Daniel, 21 days to be disconnected from the world and connected to the Spirit of God. Hello, once again we are with you today, passing the spirit of faith, because nowadays there's no exit to it, there's no way out, only to live by faith, depending on this God whom we trust highly in. And by faith, we overcome everything, and that includes the world, hell and ourselves, and by faith we obtain the greatness of God, we obtain God's mercy. But faith is not that faith, oh, I believe in God, I believe God, I trust Him, and you live your life according to your will. No. The faith which the Bible deals with, the belief which the Bible deals with, speaks about obedience, the obedient faith, the faith which obeys, not the faith which feels, not the faith which simply brings sensations, but the faith which obeys brings the benefits. So, several people, unfortunately, disgracefully, they say, Oh, come on, I've been so long in the church and absolutely nothing, almost nothing has happened in my life. And others, we could call them believers in the Lord Jesus for many years, but the lives of these people, unfortunately, is chaotic, it's a defeat, a total devastation. And where is faith? No, a person has faith, he even has faith. He has faith to receive, but does not have faith to please God, he does not have faith to obey God. That's the problem. And an important thing which faith demands is that it cannot be your will, but God's will prevailing in your life, because we do not know what's best for us, but He knows. The Apostle Paul, he teaches the kind of faith which we need to have. And the kind of faith you need to have is that faith as the example of Abraham. Abraham was an example of faith, such an example of faith that God elected him as a father in faith. So Abraham is our father in, in faith of the Jewish nation, he is the father of the Islamic nation, the father of the Christian faith. For throughout my life, I see Abraham as a reference of faith. Actually, God himself mentions this 
In Isaiah 51, he says, Look to Abraham your father in faith. And Paul, therefore, speaking about the Abrahamic faith, the faith which brings about benefits, the faith which above all things makes us to have peace with God, which means our guilt, our sins are banned because of an Abrahamic faith. An Abrahamic faith, a faith of obedience, as he speaks in the letter to the Romans, the letter to the church in Rome. It says, Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness, which means Abraham believed God and it was accounted. This verb of accounted, it seems like a judicial term, but it's understandable because he was a man who was knowledgeable, who was educated with such. But Abraham believed God and because of this belief, he was considered just. To him was attributed the justice which, the righteousness rather, which God requires from all of us. When one commits a sin, obviously and naturally, he shifts away from God because God is holiness, pureness. God is holy. And in order for us to have communion with the divine one we need to be separated we need to be holy we need to be separated from this world to live in righteousness because God is righteous so he wants us to live in righteousness in holiness separated from the world from sin from unrighteousness so when God when God is pleased by us with such faith which is the faith which makes us to obey. When I obey the word of God, Bishop, I'd like to have a faith like yours. You just have to obey the word of God, nothing else. Obey the word of God and you'll have a faith probably even greater than mine. That's it. Obey. And you will see that God will make you righteous. He'll forgive you. Obedience to the Word of God gives us the right to be cleansed, purified from our sins, and freed from our sins, acquitted from our sins. Imagine reaching the judge, and because you obeyed the law, the judge then says, look, you're free from the accusation. You're free. You can go free. This is so powerful. So God sets us free. He frees us from prison, from hell. He sets us free from the devil. He frees us from this cruel world, from all evil when when we obey His Word. So it's give and take. If I obey the Word of God, I start to have the right. I start to be deserving before God. And this father is proud of speaking of his son. This is my beloved son whom I've been well pleased with. He obeys me. What, a, what pleases God is our obedience. For example, you go to the church, you're loyal, you're faithful in the church, but if you don't obey the word of God, if you don't forgive, for example, it's worthless being Christian or claiming to be Christian. It's all worthless because Jesus said, if you forgive your debtors their debts, their offenses, then the Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive, therefore you shall also not be forgiven. So, when I obey the word, I'm forgiven. When I don't obey, I'm not forgiven. So my life depends on my obedience to the word of God. If I obey, I'm blessed. If I don't obey, I am not blessed. 
Many people ask that old question, that question which is casual, it's usual. They say, Bishop, I go to the church, I make my vows, my prayers, fast, I do this, I do that. You do everything the church directs you, instructs you to do. The only thing you don't do is what God instructs you to do. You have to forgive if you don't forgive, my friends. The worst will be with you because he who forgives sets himself free from the evil within himself. The lack of forgiveness is like a cancer which kills people inside. It's the cancer of the soul, the spiritual cancer. And there is no remedy, no doctor, psychiatrist, psychologist, no human knowledge. There's no one in this world that can set them free from dying from this cancer unless he surrenders his life to Jesus, repents from his sins, and comes to forgive the one who jeopardized him, who did him evil and brought this cancer, which is the grudge. So you who watch us now, this moment, and you say, why don't I receive the Holy Spirit? It's because deep down inside there is a grudge. Evaluate your, your life, my friend. Weigh. Weigh your being. Seek to look at yourself through the mirror of the Word of God and you'll see that this is your problem, the greatest problem of people. They cannot forgive. I was speaking to a pastor. He said to me, Bishop, he said, Bishop, I had, I was with someone who came to the church and this person had problems, he was sick, in infirmity, and he had a problem with his family member. I think it was an uncle. And I told him to forgive, ask for forgiveness, to be healed, and that person asked for forgiveness, went to where he was and asked for forgiveness, regardless of what was done. And it's funny that that person was offended by the other, but we asked for forgiveness. That's how it is, whether you're right or not. Forgiveness is to forgive. So this person asked forgiveness, but he did not accept. He turned his back. What happened? This woman, this person rather, died. And on the day, the offender went to her grave for what? Do you know why he went there? He went there to spit on her body, to spit on her coffin. He spat on her coffin. And he said to others, everyone who did me wrong, I will go to their funeral just to spit on their, on their coffins. Look at the disgraceful spirit in this man. So this is the grave problem because of pride. They don't want to forgive nor ask for forgiveness. This is the reality. And this, this is why there are people who are in churches and not yet baptized with the Holy Spirit. They don't have the Holy Spirit and, and aren't of Jesus. These people, they live a stagnant life and I don't know if they're saved, although being in churches. The Apostle Paul in Romans, he said that he who does not have the Spirit of God is not his. Romans chapter 8 verse 9, if I'm not mistaken, it reads, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he's not his. So one needs to understand this. The baptism of the Holy Spirit 
is not a suggestion, a good idea. Oh, I want to have the Holy Spirit in order to be blessed. I want to have the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues. I want the Holy Spirit for this, for that. No. You must have the Holy Spirit to be saved. To be saved. It's a lot more than to simply speak in tongues, to do this, to do that. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. It's written here. If you believe, amen. If you don't, what can we do? If you want to obey, amen. If not, then what can we do? This life is yours. Just as He forgave us, He also gives you the conditions to forgive, which means it comes from Him. He has the spirit of forgiveness. If Jesus forgives us, if he forgives our sins, which are cruel, terrible, if he forgives us, even on the last second or minute of life, if one says, my Jesus, forgive me, I accept you, immediately he's forgiven, regardless of what he did or didn't do. So if this forgiveness comes even the last minute, as was the criminal thief on the cross, the good one, then my friends, Imagine forgiveness when you give it to one who did you wrong. Forgive and you receive the Holy Spirit. You don't forgive, you won't receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, but I already speak in straight tongues. You speak the tongues of the devil, not of the angels, because the language of the angels, only those who truly forgive speak it. Because whoever doesn't has no forgiveness. This is a capital sin. The worst. There's no forgiveness. Whoever does not forgive is not forgiven. Sorry to speak in such a tough and aggress aggressive manner. But I cannot use emotional words in order for you to be emotional. No, that's it. If you forgive, you're forgiven. You don't forgive, you're not forgiven. If I forgive, I'm forgiven. If I don't forgive, I will not be forgiven. And I will be condemned. This is the reality. There's no such thing as plus, plus, minus, minus, a bit more, a bit less. Oh, but I served you all my life. Oh. If you forgave, you'll be forgiven. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. That's how it is. Give and take. This is the truth which does not change. It's unchangeable. That's it. Whoever forgives is forgiven. Whoever doesn't will also not receive. It's the green light. You are at the traffic light. The green light is the forgiveness. Red, it means you're not forgiven. You cannot pass. It's clear. God's forgiveness requires you to forgive others. And at the traffic light, if you want to skip the red light, you will die in a disaster. This is the reality. The truth, my friends, is that the scripture matches much with the daily life we all live daily. We are tempted, tempted to hate and not to forgive. This is the reality. This is the reality. If someone speaks about injustice, my God, this world is composed by injustices. It, it moved by injustices, unrighteousness. Injustice in this world is justice. This world does not know what's justice. And this is why people learn to not forgive. And still, they end up losing the chance of being forgiven as well. Forgiveness is the greatest gift God has given us. And forgiveness only takes place when we meet Jesus. When we dedicate our lives, when we surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus. Then yes, He gives us the gift of repentance and we repent. And then we forgive all who offended us and have offended us. You can imagine 
you know, how, you can just imagine how many enemies we have. Well, I don't have enemies, but many people consider me an enemy. So this is the truth. Whoever forgives is forgiven. Whoever does not forgive is not forgiven. So we are tempted. I was once offended publicly and everybody knew about this offense and this person who offended me was happy because he injured me he hurt me unjustly he hated me but in order for me not to preserve the anger the hatred within me against that person I went down on my knees and said my God you teach us to forgive so I forgive this individual and I mentioned the person's name I said my God bless that person's life and don't forget me. I even said that and I got free I set myself free from that guilt that sense of guilt because it developed that hatred was being transformed into a an incurable cancer. Friends, whoever forgives is forgiven. Whoever does not forgive is not forgiven. So you who want to receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, you need to forgive. Then you say, but Bishop, I'm in the fast of Daniel. Well, you're in the fast of Daniel. You have immersed your thoughts in the thoughts of God. But if you don't put the thoughts of God in practice, which is to forgive, for example, one of the main commandments is this one, to forgive, you need to forgive. If you don't forgive, forget the fast of Daniel. You won't receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. You really won't. I guarantee you, you only receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive. If you don't forgive, put this fast aside because it won't help it won't work and forgiveness is specifically for the one who does not deserve forgiveness just as we don't deserve it from God which means it's not a matter of that person is right but it's a matter of obeying that which God has taught us this is the Abrahamic faith Abraham believed in God how? believing in his word Abraham believed believed in a practical intelligent and rational supernatural manner he began to obey the word of God he began to obey the word of God and from then onwards God made him just before his eyes righteous and that's why Abraham became our father in faith a role model of faith and this is the reason why we're here because we were forgiven we therefore want to take to people the same forgiven forgiveness God gives however you need to forgive do you want God's forgiveness you need to forgive if you don't forgive you will also not be forgiven there are people who give their lives I had the same experience several times I went to the altar gave my life to Jesus but I wouldn't forgive so it was worthless giving my life on the altar because I did not have what it took to be forgiven because I also didn't forgive I had grudge against someone so I didn't forgive but when I forgave, then God changed my mindset. He took away the guilt, the feeling of guilt. Have you ever had this feeling? All of us have an enemy. There's only someone who has been hurt. So whenever I was hurt, I remembered that person, I would pray for them. My God, I forgive them. But I also want you to forgive your forgiveness one day as well, which means what I want for myself, I desire for someone who is an enemy, who is ungrateful. Very well, my friends. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is our daily bread. Did you know? Every day we need to eat bread. Every day we need to forgive. Every single day, because every day we also need forgiveness. 
The Apostle Paul, actually, it was the Holy Spirit who revealed it, who said it. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. He is not his. So if you don't have the Spirit of the Lord Jesus, friend, still you're not his. You can join the fast of Daniel, you can come to the church, you can be a giver, a tither, take all that you have, all your goods and lay it on the altar. But if you don't have the Spirit of God, that's it. You have to seek, you have to receive, you cannot accept the situation because it's already given. The Holy Spirit has already been given. He's already been sent. But now you need to surrender and give in as well. Because apart from that, there will be no baptism with the Holy Spirit. It's a forgiveness. It's exactly the forgiveness. If you don't forgive, how will you want forgiveness? There's no way. It's impossible. So open your understanding, please. If you don't receive the Holy Spirit, it's because there is something inside of you which is holding you. Find out what it is, lay it on the altar, and put it on the altar immediately. And by the way, on Sunday of the Passover, we will have a distinguished Lord's Supper because there will be a pact between the person and God if he truly obeys what we are guiding and put your entire life forgive do it all when he places it on the altar and he takes and drinks that cup he will receive the Holy Spirit I have no doubt if he is not forgiven then he'll receive nothing he has to forgive have no doubt if you do not forgive, you will not receive the forgiveness. There is no way to flee from this. This is your UCKG timetable, helping you to make a new beginning. Mondays, a meeting focused on achieving more in your financial life. Tuesdays, prayers for healing. Wednesdays, a meeting teaching you to develop in your spiritual life. Thursdays, a special prayer for the family. Friday, a service for your spiritual deliverance. Sundays, reconnect with God, the main meeting for your spiritual strength. Fast of Daniel is the abstinence from all secular information such as media, entertainment, music and literature for 21 days with the aim of achieving something greater, the Holy Spirit. During the Fast of Daniel you will develop an intimate communion with God. But before getting to know what you should do during the fast, you must understand what you should not do. Exclude all unnecessary and superficial activities from your life, the ones that divert your focus from God. Exclude mere entertainment or distractions that add nothing to you. What should you do during the fast of Daniel? Meditate on the Word of God every day. Go to the church as often as you can during these 21 days. Have your personal moments with God at home. Pray, fast and absorb spiritual content. Visit the UCKG's website. Follow Bishop Macedo's blog. Take part in the Fast of Daniel and observe changes in your actions and reactions. Find the answer you have been looking for for so long. The Fast of Daniel. 21 days to be disconnected from the world and connected to the Spirit of God.